never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way When Jessica and I moved to Los Angeles, a funny thing started to happen. The more we started to explore our new neighborhood, like the gas stations or the parks or certain streets, neighborhoods, or even grocery stores, we started noticing all these places showing up in movies and TV shows and even commercials. I mean, heck, we are living in Hollywood, Los Angeles, where the majority of everything you watch on TV or the big screen is filmed. And then I came across this place. Right now we're in South Pasadena, and that is the city hall that's behind me. It's this big, massive, beautiful building. And I, I drove by it and I was like, wait a second, this place looks familiar. When I was growing up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, my dad used to get us every other weekend and we would stay up late, sitting on the living room floor, eating popcorn and chips and dip and drinking soda, pop, whatever you want to call it. And we used to watch a TV show called Unsolved Mysteries. And that is where I know this place from. Tonight, a special Unsolved Mysteries report. Mysteries of alien beings. In recent years, hundreds of people have come forward with startling accounts of abduction by alien beings. Even though the descriptions are strikingly similar, there is no hard evidence that such beings actually exist. For many abductees, the memories are triggered by a vivid dream. I'm sure by now, you know the TV show Unsolved Mysteries. It's been around for 12 seasons, maybe more, and it was even brought back, like revamped or redone for today's audience. But basically, it was hosted by a man by the name of Robert Stack. He wasn't the first person, and I don't know if he was the last, but he was definitely the most memorable. His, his voice is really what brought it. But Unsolved Mysteries was all about uh, true crime and UFOs and ghosts and weird things happening and it was always touted as it was not being a news broadcast that these were actual real stories. This program is about unsolved mysteries. Whenever possible the actual family members and police officials have participated in recreating the events. What you are about to see is not a news broadcast. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say that the stories that Robert Stack would tell us every week on unsolved mysteries definitely was a huge inspiration as to what the Grim Life Collective would eventually become, like the early stages of it. I mean, think about it. The Grim Life Collective is technically like Unsolved Mysteries, but we actually take you to the places, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. It's kind of like full circle, taking you to an Unsolved Mysteries filming location. In each episode of the show, Robert Stack would begin by, I guess we would call it like a cold opening where he would be talking to the camera or walking towards the camera, kind of like what I'm doing right now. And it was always a different spot. And he would tell you the story and you would hear him talking over the story, just kind of narrating it. And it would always come back to him. Now, of course, 12 seasons plus, so many different episodes, there are so many different filming locations, but for some reason there's one that always stuck out to me. Like I said, driving past this, I was like, wait a second, I know that from something. It took me a while, but I figured it out, and that's why we're here today, on this beautiful, dreary, overcast day. I'm hoping it doesn't rain on me. What brings us here today is a small clip that was filmed right inside the entrance of the City Hall steps. Season one, I think it was episode six or seven or three or four. I don't know, it gets weird whenever you, you find it on streaming. But it's two episodes where they're talking about David Berkowitz, the son of Sam Killer from the 70s in New York City. Uh, at the start of the episode, Robert Stack can be seen walking right towards where I'm standing, coming down these steps, and then coming to a stop, talking to the camera right over towards that lamppost to the left. In 1977, the nation believed the Son of Sam murders were solved. But in the last 11 years, reporter Maury Terry has collected convincing evidence that David Berkowitz did not act alone. Tonight, we examine Terry's theory and present other mysteries where you may be able to help. Join me. You may be able to help solve a mystery. Of course, all of these scenes were filmed at night and the lights were on, including that chandelier right there. But if you look at the scene again, look at the roof above Robert Stack as he's walking. You can still see the same design. This building is beautiful. Even though what they filmed here really wasn't that much for the show, for some reason to me, 
I remember it more than any of the other locations. It's kind of iconic to me. Like I said, driving by it, I recognized it immediately, just didn't know from where. Still kind of cool, right? A little sliver of Hollywood nugget, right? Unsolved Mysteries, Robert Stack. And now we're heading all the way across town to the final resting place of Robert Stack himself. And the actor Robert Stack died yesterday at his home in Los Angeles. His wife said the cause was heart failure. His film career began back in 1939, and he appeared in many movies, even getting an Oscar nomination as Best Supporting Actor for the 1956 melodrama, Written on the Wind. But his real fame came on television as the legendary mob buster Elliot Ness of The Untouchables. Later, he was best known to a younger generation as the host of the syndicated series, Unsolved Mysteries. Robert Stack was 84 years old. The final resting place of the host of Unsolved Mysteries, Robert Stack, is here at the Pierce Brothers Westwood Village Memorial Park. It's a very small cemetery, and I guess you can say it's pretty star-studded. There's a lot of famous people buried here. This isn't the first time that we've been inside this cemetery doing a video. It's small and it's hidden from everyone, but there's so many famous people buried here, so many celebrities. Betty Page, Heather O'Rourke, Don Knotts, Hugh Hefner and Marilyn Monroe. In fact, their final resting place is right there in the center of your screen. But we're going to complete this 360 view of the cemetery. Like I said, it's not very big. But this little nook over here known as the Room of Prayer. I don't think we're going to be able to get in. It's under lock and key unless you're a family member. We can at least walk up to the gate. And I can show you where he's at. Right there, you see those two books? Almost like bookends on the top shelf. Crazy. Unsolved Mysteries is what I remember Robert Stack the most from, and he started hosting it in 1987. But I guess most people remember him from his role as Elliot Ness in the movie The Untouchables. But he was also in a movie called 1941, which was directed by Steven Spielberg. He was in Airplane. Um, he, it was a, an animated version of him in Beavis and Butthead Do America, Caddyshack 2, Joe vs. the Volcano, uh, Basketball. I mean, the man has been in a lot of stuff. He also provided the voice for the character Ultra Magnus in the Transformers movie in 1986. I didn't know that until I started doing research on him. And with that, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time telling the story of Robert Stack, visiting what I consider probably the most memorable Unsolved Mysteries filming location, as well as the final resting place of Robert Stack himself. Till next time, happy Halloween. Do our minds possess untapped psychic powers? Can we move objects without touching them? Can we communicate clairvoyantly with the dead? Join me. Two weeks from tonight, as we explore these intriguing questions on a special Unsolved Mysteries report, Mysteries of the Psychic Mind. Murder and Tomlin, look, it's coming my way, wherever I go, hard luck, is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day, a bad luck's always.